significant stories, significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and welcome to Significant TV. In the studio with me today is Dr. James Chan, President of Asia Marketing and Management. Globalization, that's a word that in 2017 gets some folks ready to fight. But today, our guest will share that he's a maverick and fighting is not part of what he does. Dr. Chan, welcome to Significant TV. Thank How are you, you feeling today? I'm feeling fine. You yeah, are? Uh, driving here was uh, a song. <laughs> excellent, excellent. <laughs> Globalization, let's just start in right there. Right. Your company is named Asia Marketing and Management, mm -hmm. and you've been in business for a number of years. Many. 1981. Yep, since 1983. 1983. In 1981 to 83, I worked for a Fortune 500 company in New York mm -hmm. City. That's when I learned how to export American-made mm -hmm. scientific, technical uh, information to China. Mm -hmm. And so earlier when we were talking, mm -hmm. I am in fact a maverick because very few people know what I do. I sell American-made products to China and other countries in Asia. Wow. See. So you're one of the good guys. Well, <laughs> it's something I want to do. I like to sell. And mm -hmm. I somehow also believe it's not just about creating jobs for America, which is my country. It has yes. been my country since 1987 when I mm -hmm. first became a U.S. citizen. Ah, but it's not just that. It's I, I kind of like the idea because selling is like convincing people why they want to open their wallet and pay you. There must be a reason. It gives the passion, me a passion. I can tell. I can tell. You're like smiling and energetic. So let's go back. Exporting, mm -hmm. giving Americans an opportunity right. to have their products and services sold to China. Right. Why that idea? I mean, even okay. in 1981, working for corporate, in 1983, starting your own company, right. That's kind of a different concept. Well, I kind of fell into it in two phases, mm -hmm. two steps. Mm -hmm. Step number one, to make an extremely painful <laughs> story short. Okay. One day in Santa City, I walked into the St. Peter and Paul Cathedral. Yes. I was being deported three times because I overstayed as a foreign student, I overstay my visa. I right. shouldn't have done that. It's my fault. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I was summoned three times to a deportation hearing. And of course, I could return to Hong Kong. I could. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to. And But after having spent the equivalent of 53,000 US dollars of today's money, paying mm -hmm. three lawyers, the first one is Irish American, the second one is Jewish American, the third one is Chinese American. Essentially, I was about to be uh, deported. Mm -hmm. And I lost all my energy, almost. I was in near despair. Mm -hmm. And I finally, I was so anxious. I was walking around in Santa City. I happened to be right next to the cathedral. I am not a Christian. Mm -hmm. That's just a fact. Mm -hmm. But I said, I got a chance. I got my last chance. Talk to God. So at that moment, I walked into the cathedral. I went down on my knees and I s say to God, if you can help me get a green card, I will help put China and U.S. closer together. Wow. That's the moment when I came up with an idea that I am comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Now, it has to be refined later as to how I could make money sure. with an idea. Sure. But that was... the. Uh, that was the, really, that's the kernel. That's the original, that's how the fire, that's how I lit up my fire. That's how I found out what I wanted to do in life. Fascinating. Other than getting a PhD. Everybody can get a <laughs> PhD at any time. Well, not everybody. I think less than... Everybody. <laughs> it's not a myth. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just overly excited. Dr. Chen. <laughs> Excitement. Energy. You wrote this book, mm -hmm. and I want to share it with folks, the title, Spare Room Tycoon, Succeeding Independently, the 70 Lessons. Some people do five, Too some many. people do 10, <laughs> maybe 50. Uh, overachiever yeah. here, and it's, it's wonderful. Um, the 70 Lessons of Sane Self-Employment. 
I had an opportunity to hear you about 15 years ago in Villanova University when you were speaking to a number of consultants. Mm -hmm. And I was intrigued by this concept of mm -hmm. the spare room tycoon, mm -hmm. obviously a play on the Asian um, sure. flavor. Right. What's in the book and why did you write it? The book is really about the emotional tumult the ups and downs of trying to make a living doing what one wants to do. Mm -hmm. Of course, I can even be corny and say love to do, but let's just say want to do. Okay. When you want or love to do something, chances are nobody pays you. <laughs> That's right. They don't care about your no, happiness. No, 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 no. <laughs> and they're not wrong. It's just like, why, they said. Mm -hmm. And so, in a way, anybody who is foolhardy enough, <laughs> myself included, to want to I make myself money in that category. <laughs> doing something that they want to do for all kinds of reason has to go through a sequence of storms. And that was the basic reason why I wrote the book, but the immediate reason was I had a very long ongoing client, mm -hmm. uh, like after some 15, 16 years of working for them day in and day out, year mm -hmm. in and year out, mm -hmm. I still felt that they were trying to nickel and dime me. Ah. Mm -hmm. And that got me so mad, <laughs> so mad, that at that very moment when I was very mad, a friend of mine who was also an accomplished writer with his agent in New York and all the right mm -hmm. connections mm -hmm. he looks at me and he tells me James don't get upset you're not the only one who suffers from this Absolutely. write a book I help you because I have the agent I have all the all the connections and you know I can also work with you uh, mm -hmm. he is the professional writer mm -hmm. I can write I mean I, I I actually wrote the book but he also helped me so if you look at the book carefully there are two authors that's me, because uh, I'm the lead, because I right. interview Jeez. 40 people. Right. And then somebody who is a professional, established writer helps me. Mm -hmm. So it's a joint effort. But James Chan and Thomas, Thomas Hine. Hine. Right. In 2000, 17 years later, which of these stories, if you had to pick two, oh, which of are these good. interviews are, are still good. relevant? Oh. Tell that to CNN. I'm sorry. Many, no, go ahead. <laughs> many are relevant, but two. I'm, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Two. The first one is the sh story on Rick Schilling. Mm -hmm. Rick Schilling used to be a banker mm -hmm. working for different banks. You know, mm -hmm. they kind of, mm -hmm. they hire you, they fire you, they hire you, they fire you. <laughs> so at some point he said, forget it. I'm not going to do this anymore. Right. So he set up his own business. It's mm -hmm. about how to charge. How mm -hmm. much to charge. Nobody knows. That's a people, timeless lesson. People who do work on a nine to five basis, can't blame them, but they really don't know how to charge. Mm -hmm. That's one. Mm -hmm. The other one, mm, it's a toss up between Mike McGrail and Marianne Sheik. Marianne Sheik is a lawyer in mm -hmm. Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Mike McGrail used to work for M&M Mars and mm -hmm. Exxon Mobil mm -hmm. and is a management consultant. I will go with Marianne Sheik. Okay, good. It's six worries. <laughs> She likes to worry. Okay. Oh, am I growing old? Do I have enough money? Will people love me? Oh, I'm a single woman. Oh, working mm -hmm. in, in, in home by myself. Am mm -hmm. I totally isolated? All kinds mm -hmm. of worries. Mm -hmm. And uh, those worries are totally justified. That's why one mm. of the reasons why I joined a consultant's network or other things is so people, and I'm telling people, you should go out. When you are self-employed, you must not stay home. Mm. Absolutely. Otherwise, you go totally berserk. Which leads to the title, 70 Lessons of Sane oh, yeah. Self-Employment. Self right, right. I, I it's easy to some... be insane. Yes, it is it's easy. It's justified. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, friend. I'm not kidding. This is very painful. I'm you. just laughing. People, people have called me crazy. So, it's better and, to and laugh. And I think right. they were being kind. It's better to so laugh. It is better to oh, laugh. Oh, yeah. It is better to no, laugh. No, 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 no straw here. <laughs> So let's go back yeah. to what you mm -hmm. have been doing yep. for years. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, how is your company relevant today? Oh, very. In fact, mm -hmm. increasingly relevant. Mm -hmm. When I started out, uh, well, when I was an employee of a large company, mm -hmm. I learned how to sell very high level scientific technical books and journals, mm -hmm. methods in enzymology, seismology, 
geotectonics. Oh, yeah, you know, I mean, nobody would want to read that. All of the some, ologies. Yeah, ologies. all the ologies, okay, right. right. So, mm -hmm. including my allergies. There's, a, there's also a journal <laughs> Wait a called minute. Blood Wait a and Mildew. <laughs> Those were journals I saw. Blood and Mildew. Oh, yeah, and in English. Okay, in you English. do have to be a good salesperson oh, to sell yes. Blood and Mildew oh, journals. You, okay, excuse me. <laughs> if you are pushed to the corner, you'll do anything <laughs> like me. So, I succeeded in selling. I got checks, mm -hmm. like $300,000 a check from Beijing. So it's like okay. vampire. I learned I learned how to smell blood. Like mm -hmm. I knew how to do it. <laughs> like a shark. Oh well, you know. I mean, you have to have. It's like birds. You know, mm -hmm. the, mo the the first time you learn how to fly, you kind of have confidence. You can do mm -hmm. it again. So that's the that's the beginning. And then mm -hmm. over the years, I've been selling lumber. Mm -hmm. I've been marketings, uh, uh, bearings, very sophisticated mm -hmm. components for turbines, for gearboxes. I've been selling adhesives. I've been mm -hmm. selling springs, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, so American companies come to you right. so that their products can be sold into China. Right. The Chinese will open their wallet mm -hmm. and then actually pay us, mm -hmm. pay, pay. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. I make it sound like it's easy. Mm -hmm. It's extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. But nothing is easy, friend. You know that. I know that. So there's no need to fool oneself and fool other people. <laughs> Moving forward, clearly right. you have vision. Moving forward, how do you imagine the world in 2025? Mm. That was not a question on the script, yeah. but I, I'm confident that your nobody, answer will be totally enlightening. Nobody, <laughs> nobody really knows. <laughs> But I think China is going to be more important. The international market is going to be more important vis-a-vis -vis mm -hmm. America. Mm -hmm. This in this year 2017, it's no longer America in the 50s and 60s. Correct. Correct. We actually have had over the decades not easy, not really a problem, but we have had a shrinking share of the of global wealth. Absolutely. So if people still think that we are now you know, the hot shot number one, we are, but not forever. Not for long. And the international markets are increasingly more important and therefore exporting, this is what I do, mm -hmm. selling mm -hmm. American made products and technology or services uh, will become even more important. Whether or not people want to do it, uh, it will happen. Okay. So when I heard you 15 years ago, you talked about how when someone is working as a solopreneur, mm -hmm. the most they can make, and this stuck in my mind, right. was $250,000 because just, you know, it's... Did I say that? You, you said really? that. Really? With and a I, number? I said, with a number. Wow. Um, and so I'm wondering, <laughs> given that international markets are, are mm -hmm. becoming more important, how do you see your company expanding over the next five years? It's an excellent question. I'm mm -hmm. not thinking of expanding as much as I'm thinking of living a life that I find in Tibetan Buddhism, which is now mm. I'm reading, that conforms with my nature mind. In other words, I'm just trying to be myself. I'm trying, like the Maslow Triangle, yes, I'm trying absolutely. to achieve self-realization. Okay. I am not talking about being the strongest man on earth, conquering the world. Those are options. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm not a corporate executive. Mm -hmm. I don't need to commandeer 500,000 employees to feel good. Mm -hmm. I only need to commandeer my own heart, which is good mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. It's like in Dante. If you look at, if you, if you follow Dante's paradiso, paradise, mm -hmm. he was, he's actually complaining to the only, almost only human being whose face is still visible in paradise is Pacata. Bacada uh, Donate, a nun. And Dante sees her because she's still more mm -hmm. or less uh, recognizable physically. Mm -hmm. And he said, and he's being very corporate, hey, sister, why don't you? I mean, you are in heaven, but you are in the lowest <laughs> rung of heaven. Why are you so unambitious? Why can't you go up and up and up? And this is the only the, the line I love the most in Dante. Okay. And it will be the final line. She, and she said, no, I only want to live a life that conforms to God's will. I don't need to compete and compare with other people or even with God. No, there's no point. So Dante, leave me alone. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> 
Dr. Chen. Yes. You are delightful. Thank you. You are absolutely <laughs> delightful. You are truly significant. <laughs> well. And I know that our viewers will think about entrepreneurship in a totally different way. I hope so. Significant stories, significant entrepreneurs, <laughs> significant surprises. Dr. James, James Chan, president of Asia Marketing and Management. Remember, he's one of the good guys. He's exporting American goods to China. Continue to join Significant TV. Thank you, Dr. Chen. Thank you, friend. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it.